Hello, and welcome to Fresh Blood, a podcast about killing it in the age of ageism, where we prove that new blood does not necessarily equal young blood. Here to discuss what it takes to have continued success through life, I'll be your host, Jolie Downs. With over 20 years of executive recruiting experience, I've learned how much we can grow and be inspired by other people's stories. I'm excited to share that with you here on Fresh Blood. Today, we are speaking with Carnella Adjassen. Carnella started her career in the corporate world as a senior management consultant with large companies such as Oracle, Ernst & Young, and Capgemini. She found herself fascinated with the transformative power of technology, and Carnella started looking for new ways to create meaningful, relevant design across physical and digital platforms. What formed was the creation of Mind Catalyst LLC. Carnella is the president and CEO of Mind Catalyst. It's an Atlanta-based creative technology and design firm that helps companies solve complex challenges with innovative technology design. Carnella focuses in on human-centered, responsible, and mindful technology, which I love. Carnella, thank you so much for joining us on Fresh Blood. I'm really looking forward to learning more about your story. Could you tell us a bit about your transition? I mean, how did you go from management consultant to la- launching your own company? Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm I'm very happy to be on your show. Yeah, so I had gotten to a place where, you know, having children, having, you know, raising a family, I decided to focus in on did I want to go back to corporate America in the way that I went, that I was working in before? Not really looking at necessarily impact or looking at relevance to my own personal desires and needs, but it was really just more about just a career path. I wanted to be more intentional, and I'm not sure if being a, uh, becoming a mother helped me to do that, <laughs> just to, to want to be more intentional, but I really believe that a lot of that had to do with that pivot for me. I wanted to create and be aligned with products that were more purposeful in nature and that were more intentional, really that were solving real problems as opposed to just business problems, but really solving the needs of real users, products that are similar to, you know, creating wearables that maybe help with uh, detecting early detection of mammograms or helping with people to look at um, better uses of AI or machine learning as it relates to mental health issues or, you know, creating products as it relates to more ed tech or, or medical tech or health tech. So I was looking to do something that was more in line with that. So I created a framework that kind of mixes together lean, agile practices of which to quickly and rapidly prototype and get uh, products out into the market space. And so doing, I actually helped with kind of tweaking that with some entrepreneur women in a group here in Atlanta. And I worked through refining that process and working with those clients on their particular products. And so that really was the, 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 the starting point for me transitioning from going back to corporate America versus starting my own firm. I worked with two really interesting projects through that, that women organization with two female entrepreneurs and really, that was the blossoming of, of my practice from there. That's wonderful. And what was it like building this practice? So it sounds like you became a mother and, and that shifted some things inside of you to, to want to focus more on the things that are important to you. I mean, building a company is not the easiest thing to do. What was that process like for you? Yeah. So, you know, as you, as you said, it was, it wasn't an easy process uh, and it isn't an easy process. It continues not to be an easy process. You know, we're in COVID and uh, many businesses um, are, are really pivoting and, and, and others are finding it difficult to pivot in this space. So it's never easy, but it's one that I'm committed to. I'm committed to, you know, really calling my own shots, really making a big a difference in the way that I see fit while also helping others to do the same. So for me, it's really a, a matter of commitment in the uh, industry itself, in the space itself. I also advise and mentor uh, a, n- a number of startup companies around Atlanta and, and globally. And I serve also, also as an advisor to many of them. And so, yeah, it, it's not an easy process, but what keeps me going in this space is really just having the ability to 
work in a space that I absolutely love and adore and I, I feel really uh, excited about every day when I wake up in the morning. Uh, that, that helps quite a bit. And then also working with companies that are being innovative, that are thinking outside the box, that are really trying to disrupt industries. That for me is really much of a, a big calling for me. And uh, it's one that I, I resonate with deeply. Oh, yeah. No, it, it sounds like you're working on a really fascinating projects. I mean, just the few that you mentioned in the first couple of minutes where I was just like, wow, these are really interesting. What was one of the more interesting things you've worked on or a couple of the interesting things that you worked on? So working on really launching into more IoT, you know, Internet of Things types of products where we have an app and we also have a physical device and having those talk to one another or have the interchangeable data that goes through both device as well as your mobile application. So really working on those types of projects for me is, is, has been really exciting. As IoT changes and, and, and evolves over time, uh, it's been quite interesting to see the evolution of it, you know, to, to move about the industry. Yeah, so I've been working a lot on a lot of those type projects right now, and it's, it's pretty exciting how things are moving going forward. Have you had a shift during this pandemic personally? Yes, absolutely. You know, because usually, well, we really work already remote. So we've been working remote since 2011. So that way in which we do work has not really changed, but it's really just how do we attract um, clients. And so most clients want to see you or they want you to fly to their office or or they fly to you. And so many of the clients that we're working with, they're not used to working remote. And so that's been a a big shift for us and, and, you know, just how we work remote. So during our Zoom calls, you know, sharing uh, screens and, and, you know, allowing those meetings and those uh, stand-up calls uh, because we found the agile process to be more um, interactive. It's something that we've been really working more towards so that our clients can really feel engaged and like we are not necessarily there in the office with them, but almost as, as, as close as we can get. And also just how we attract our client base. So another thing that we've done is uh, we've started working on our own product in-house. We've actually started developing a prototype and we've done some research prior to that. But uh, we're looking at, you know, yeah, we've been working with clients in, in terms of developing and realizing their products for many, many years. So now we're looking at developing our own in-house products as well to bring out to the market space as well. So that's one of our pivots uh, to not just be a service-led company, but also be a product uh, that company as well. Oh, that's exciting too. What a great pivot. I, I mean, in, in a time like this, without a time like this, may, you might not have had the chance to put the time in or, or that going. Absolutely. I mean, we've, I've been thinking about it for a while and just hadn't, you know, made the time to do it, you know, because busy working with other clients, but COVID-19 and just being locked down and, and, and not really even now we're even officially locked down, but it's, it's, you know, really to be safe. We just don't, I don't go out as much. Like you said, it's, it's given us a little bit more time to, uh, to start thinking about working inside the business more. And, and that's one of the things that we came up with. Yeah. That's exciting. Oh, that's mm-hmm. very cool. Yeah, absolutely. What would you say has been your greatest success to date at this point and, and, and what did you learn from it? Wow. So I'd say one of my successes today is I've actually finished, finally finished writing my book. So, um, and I, I see that as a <laughs> success because I've been working on this, on this book for uh, quite a while and the book doesn't come out until next year. However, we are starting our pre-launch um, this month. And so the book really talks about how do you go from just a layman's person? How do you go from idea to market, you know, and and really grow that product? How do you pick the right development team or development consultant, designer? How do you really strategize around the product itself and test and validate those early ideas to come up with an idea that makes sense, that's that's more resonating with your customer base? So really just helping people to kind of map through that with as much, you know, kind of holding their hand through the, through the process, through the book. And one thing that the book also will have an accompany with that is a, the actual online virtual accelerator, which we're also launching. So that accelerator is the physical version of the book. And so what we're doing in Accelerator is having people to kind of go through in a, in a group setting, say no more than 12 or 15 people will walk through their idea, help them with, you know, finessing their idea, strategizing around the idea, making sure the idea makes sense, testing it with real users, and then helping them with the design of their product in terms of a prototype, prototyping that out, 
and then helping them with the pitch. So when they finish the program, uh, instead of a market pro- a product, they'll have a prototype of the product, which is clickable. It's been tested with real users, and then they'll, they have it embedded in a in a PowerPoint as a, for a presentation to actually then go out and talk to would-be pr- um, customers, partners, angel or VC investors, so they can have a clear understanding of what the product is, how it functions, what the functionality is, usage, what problem it's solving, taking them through that whole process. That is amazing. That sounds incredible. So just back up really quick. So if you buy the book, you get to be a part of this online program or do you pay extra for the online program? The book is separate, but because the book goes more into detail, the book, you know, of course, because the book goes into full detail in terms of the types of designers you're gonna you can come up with the developers, you know, finessing your idea, actually taking it all the way to market to taking it to Apple Store or Google Play. The virtual accelerator has its limits, right? Because it is virtual. We can tap into people around the globe. And that's also one of our pivots as well. But we can only go but so far because we are it's very hands-on. So yeah, you know, we're not taking all the way to the market, but we're at least getting you to the prototype version of it. We're taking you to the clickable prototype where you can say, hey, I have an idea. Someone can download an idea of that prototype on their phone and even play with it, interact with it, and really have a full understanding of what that product really is and how it actually operates. So they really work in conjunction with each other, basically. Yes, they work in conjunction with one another. Yes. Yeah. No, it's it's brilliant because so I mean, really, this is this is the area that stops majority of people, I would say. You know, you have that great idea, but you don't know what what to do with it. You don't know where to go. And, and there are lots of books out there and, you know, but to have something that's tied in with, I love this tie in with the virtual to have that support, that handholding that play, like, that is fantastic. Yeah. And, and then where, the, where you leave off when you, when you had the finished prototype in your hand, the book continues with actually taking it to market. And then from there, so you actually, you know, have the full process already there in your hands. And also as part of, like you said, as part of the group, you have the ongoing support around you and not just the support of our team, but you also have the support of your fellow colleagues that are also in the virtual accelerator as well, that are also there to support your, your ideas as well. The entrepreneur in me is just all excited. About this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. I love it. And so that's coming out in next year. We're preparing to do an early access program in January and we are taking 15 participants. And so it, it will run for eight weeks. Uh, the program runs for eight weeks. And at the end of the program, the fifth week, I'm, I'm sorry, the eighth week is when you will be doing kind of a gallery walk where everyone will share their prototype that's been finished because we will work on that and we will be developing that for them. And then everyone will get an opportunity to interact and engage with each person's prototype. That's amazing. Yeah. And then give, give, give feedback. In case anyone listening is, is interested, what's the name of this program? It's called the Purposeful Collab. Purposeful, all right. Purposeful Collab. And we'll have links on that within the show notes too. Yes. I will make sure that you get all the, the links in our logo and our URL. So how was that process for you writing the book? How long did it take you? Because a lot of people think about this. This is not easy to do. <laughs> no one actually did plan. Yeah. So it took me three years to write the book. Um, yes. It took me three years and uh, we're on the tail end of editing right now. And I'm just so excited to finally be finished with it and no longer having to spend long weekends and, and long nights, you know, writing the book and also re-editing. <laughs> <laughs> Such a celebration. Well, what, what would you say you've learned from that process? It's funny because, you know, you, you do your work every day and you, and you think you know the process, and, but you do know the process on your own, but then the, to explain to someone else and to take them through step-by-step step is another thing. And then things change, you know, as, as things change and how we're going to communicate that or how I can communicate that better for just anyone to understand. So it's not too technical. It's not, it's, it's, it's approachable. It's, it's, it's grounded. You know, for me, that was really the, the big challenge. And, and that's what I really learned about it is that to make sure that, you know, the process that I was conveying and communicating was one that was seeped in a groundedness and a, that it was approachable and friendly enough for anyone to pick it up. Got it. No. And that makes sense. Um, as far as just going through that process and dealing with, um, the right way to communicate and, you know, communicating your message. It's so powerful. And when you are writing your book, the whole thing is communicating your message and how to 
do it in the right way. So <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So that's what I really learned from it. And just really, because I, I want it to be approachable. I don't want it to be a, like a technical, you know, if it's for techie kind of people, but really it's for anyone that can just say, hey, you know, I have an idea, you know, I, I have so many clients that are not necessarily in IT, but they have some technology ideas. You know, I have a, I had one a CMO who had a great idea for um, a car sharing app that would, that also included a, a kiosk. Uh, and, th- and no, she's not in IT, but she had an idea that was a tech idea. And so most people think, well, I'm not in IT. I don't have any ideas that are related to technology. But, you know, technology today is so agnostic. I mean, it's it's everywhere. And so you almost, almost can't have an idea that doesn't touch technology these days. And if anyone can do this. So that means, I mean, someone who has no technology background, but has that great idea could come to your company or they could buy your book and become a part of this accelerator and get their product to market. That's right. Because again, you know, our process is that it, within our process is to help you to refine that, right? And then also not just refine, refine it, but to validate the idea. So we're going to validate the idea with real users that will give feedback and input because people fail to forget that, you know, Facebook, Twitter, you know, LinkedIn, all of these apps that we, we all use on a regular basis did not look anything like they look today 10 years ago. You know, they just didn't, right? So what? how did they get to where they are now in terms of how they look and feel and function? It was the feedback from us, the feedback from users. You know, that's what helped the products to evolve and, and also to be a better fit for how we live our lives and how we actually interact and engage with the applications. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking to myself how how good this must feel as a career for you to, to help people bring their ideas and their dreams to reality. I mean, that's just kind of do it is. And, and for me, it, but, but for me, it's, it's really specific though. Right. So it, that's why it's called the per, you know, purposeful collab because purposeful for me is that, again, it goes back to my own life that it has to be something that is purposeful. Like it's not just about, Hey, we want to, you know, we want to increase our bottom, our, our bottom line. You know, it's, it's not about that. Right. It's about, you know, looking at the landscape of, you know, your own life or looking at the world and seeing what some of the pressing issues are that are, that are resonating with you. And then what, what is your solution to those? Right. So if you're the, if you're the mom who, uh, or a teacher who's struggling with, you know, teaching kids online, because now you've had to be thrust into the whole notion of online learning. Uh, but you have some ideas about how to improve that to make sure that the learning experience of your, of your students and also your parents is more engaging. Then, you know, coming up with an idea to do that for me is like, that's a very purposeful and intentional product that we can create together. So that's why I said it's a collab. So what do you feel has been key to continued life, continued success in your life? Um, I think key continued success in my life has been really staying true to myself. Um, You know, when I'm you know, looking, excuse me, looking inward as opposed to outward. So when I'm looking inward and looking at what really makes sense to me, what feels good for me and what feels aligned with my principles and values, um, and I'm being authentic about that, um, that's what keeps me focused. That's what keeps me in alignment. And I think, and that's what really, um, you know, really yields and and makes success come to me. Um, I think as opposed to the opposite way around. Mm, I love that. It's just, it, it's all feels right inside of you. And, and that, that attracts the success. I, I, I agree. I agree. You embody it. Yes, yourself. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it. What well, now I always feel, you know, I love the question. Tell me about a time that you failed. You yeah. know, had a school mate, you know, big mistake. What did you learn from it? Always great things to learn. from. Things. Yeah. <laughs> we have a ton of those, right? I, I see those as uh, vitamins personally uh, for me. And, and then, and of course, right. So those are the vitamins and nutrients um, that really fuels our soul and our, you know, even like we are looking at gardening, um, it's that it's the, it's the rubbish really that helps it grow, right? The manure, all those things really help things to grow and blossom. And I think that's what the mistakes are in our lives. I mean, yes, it, I, I didn't come to this today. I mean, or, or 20 years ago, but I mean, of course I've evolved to that, you know, as a kid, teenager, of course, um, I didn't feel that way at all. <laughs> I didn't want to make any mistakes. Um, but I've come to, to, to this 
um, just way of being and way of living my life that um, it takes these mistakes to to grow and to help you to mature into the way of thinking that could be more leading towards a, a more successful living life. Um, so some mistakes I've had certainly have been, you know, getting some of the people's ideas wrong or, um, uh, you know, thinking I can help a client when I really can't, you know, or, you know, taking on a client that really isn't my client. You know, um, I had a client that I took on and I really loved her idea uh, and I had some great strategy around it. Uh, and we had a meeting and uh, I talked her through what my strategy was in terms of the concept, you know, con- kind of conceptualizing, you know, what I thought, how we could approach her idea. Uh, and it's not what she wanted, you know, and she said, well, that's not what I want. You know, I don't, I don't care about this whole purposeful stuff that you're talking about. That's, I don't want that, you know, this whole purposeful mumbo jumbo, you know, look, I just want to be like Facebook. I want to make money, you know, and, you know, tons of frustration. I thought I could change her mind and (laughs) change how she thought about, you know, her business approach and how she was approaching her product. And the the more I tried, the more frustrated I, I ended up, Um, being in the process and it just, you know, kind of souring the relationship. And so what I realized in that experience was that, um, you know, I need to determine who is going to be, who I'm I'm not for everyone. Right. And I need to be okay with that. Right. And not try to force, um, you know, how I want to live life and how I want to, how I want to, to own my businesses or run my business uh, on everyone, because that's on everybody's um, intention. So, you know, it was a painstaking uh, experience um, uh, for me, but I had to realize that that's, that's, that's just what it is. You know, um, the people that are for me will, will show up and the people who aren't, um, I have to be okay with, um, with not engaging. And, and staying in, in alignment with your own goals and purposes, I imagine makes, it makes the work enjoyable uh, as compared to what you were experiencing with this person. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like, Oh, I just want to make money. I want to be like Facebook. It's like, do you really want to be like Facebook? I mean, have you seen all the hearings and <laughs> I, I, I don't, but yeah, it's okay. I mean, like, I don't want you to sell people's information without their own knowledge. I mean, that's, you know, it's just not the right way to do things. Well, you know, well, they did and they, they're doing fine. So, you know, that's just not for me. I, I, I think, and that's why I even named the um, the group uh, purposeful because I wanted to be very off putting for those who that's not their intention, uh, and that's okay. And I, I wanted to be that specifically for people who I wanted people to self designate and self align um, with my mission and where I'm trying to go with this. Um, so yeah, it is for women. I just want to make that known that it is it is just for women. Uh, we do also. We're welcoming uh, men, of course, but um, it is marketed. It will be marketed towards women because most times, most of the women that I work with don't even see themselves becoming um, innovators or or tech founders. Um, They feel like they have to go get another degree or get some more training or get a certification, you know, and it's like, no, you have the idea. It came to you. It's time for you now to bring birth it into this world. Many women just don't do that. My male clients are like, hey, do, hey, okay, so this is your idea. And so how much experience do you have in this space? None. <laughs> you know? and, but they're like, but so what? Let's do it. Let's, do it. <laughs> Let's get done. You know, um, the women are like, uh, well, you know. Uh, but I've never done this. Yeah, I've never done this before. I think I need to go pick another, another PhD, yeah. <laughs> you know? another MBA. <laughs> Oh, this is so <laughs> it's incredible. It's like, no, you're more than well qualified to make this happen today. Okay. Oh, I love it. What an important message. And, and, and the mindful aspect. We need more, we need more companies like that. That's, yeah. really important. That's an important message that to be spread. Really Absolutely. Uh, and so for me, it's like encouraging more women to say, look, you know, we are not just passive users. You know, we need your creativity. We need your thoughts. We need your ideas also as part of this ecosystem that we're in, in this world. There's so many problems to be solved in this world. And we need all of your ideas. We need to, we don't need just the, the ideas of, you know, the men. We need also ideas of women, you know, that, that are also, you know, also ch- taking on the challenge of coming up with ideas that are really solving real problems. And I, and I think, not to be sound sexist, I think women have a really unique knack to do that. Mm-hmm. I agree. 
I completely agree. And, and, um, there's just a lot of room for growth there. There's a lot of room for, for, for growth for us women to stand up and start bringing those ideas to the table because you're right. Too many, too many of us have just, our, our natural brains haven't gone that way. I don't know what it is if we just weren't brought up that same way, but there is a, a definite difference in, in gender when it comes to these things. Absolutely. What, what So what it, would be the best advice that you could give someone um, maybe who's in the you know second half of their life and they're maybe not fully happy with where they're at in life or trying to find that right next thing. Is there any best advice you, you would have for someone in that situation? You know, most times people think, oh, I have to come up with an idea. It's always just sim- like this right around you, right? It's just, it's really that simple. You know, um, the CMO, I go back to my CMO client. Um, she was in her 60s when we started her product. Yeah. And <laughs> she's like a fire firecracker. She's like, okay, let's do this. You know, because she's like, well, I don't know about that, that kind of idea. I could never do something like that. I said, why not? Why not? And so we did it and we did it in two years. Um, and so, you know, I had another client who's a teacher. And so she's been teaching language arts for years and she just couldn't come up with an idea. And I'm like, okay, you are you telling me you can't come up with that one idea? No. Well, what about teaching kids um, writing skills, writing mechanics online as an online language arts school? Yes, they have language arts in school every day, but you have tutoring, you have math tutoring. I, most people need also language arts tutoring. <laughs> going off so, right now. Too. Yeah. So <laughs> it's always just kind of right under your nose, right? You don't have to look too far to think of ideas that will make sense for you. And also that solves a real problem, you know, into this space. So or whatever spaces you're looking at, right? It's, it's really just right under your nose. And I think it's just really about just being more self-reflective, just kind of looking at your life and looking at, you know, observing how you're in, in, in interacting, engaging, whether you're teaching your child at home or whether you're, you know, you're paying for something at a store, you know, just thinking about how that actually worked and, and, and um, maybe what experience that you had that you didn't particularly care for and how you could possibly change that. Oh, it's so inspiring. It's fantastic. What about for yourself? Now, are there specific habits you've adopted that have helped you become successful in life? You know, for me, the best uh, things I would say that's helped me to become more successful, again, it's not just looking at my, looking at my own self and just being more self-reflective uh, and also listening to my own inner voice as opposed to what's outside of me. That in itself, for me, it has been a, a, a tremendous shift in terms of allowing me to be sort of more successful in my own skin and, and how I see success for me. Um, but also just coming up with routines for, you know, how I begin my day, how I end my day. I think that's also been very instrumental also in helping with success because it, it may sound trivial, but it's, you know, if I start my day off by making my bed and, and working out, you know, okay, that that's success for the day. I've at least done that, right? So anything else that goes on after that, hey, I can check something off my box, you know, because yeah. <laughs> like, I go through my days with, you know, meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. And sometimes I don't feel like I've really achieved much. Right. But when I got to the place where I said, okay, you know what, I'm going to start, you know, making my bed, you know, uh, working out and doing some meditation. Um, that's how I'm going to start my day. And so when I started doing that, I started seeing more, you know, and I'm habitual about that. I, I don't, uh, deviate from from that, and I end my day the same way, you know. So I, you know, the bath and you know, workout bath and uh, meditation, or just some, you know, the, the calm app or the story, uh, the story on on the calm app, you know. And I, I put myself to sleep that that way. So I think, you know, just ending my day and have a routine there that makes sense in terms of beginning my day and then ending my day, you know, makes me feel personally um, successful on a regular basis. That's great. Well, and I know I've, I've read that that is a, a very big habit of the major power players, the major successful people in life to, to have that right start to your day and right end to your day. And, and actually what you described, uh, the way you start your day is exactly what they say is the best way to do it. So that's yeah, it. It works. It has worked. And thank goodness for the Calm app. <laughs> that was right? a beautiful problem we have solved <laughs> for, for me. <laughs> yes, there are some really good apps that they they that have made a huge, especially during this pandemic. Oh my uh, goodness! Yes, 
mm-hmm. made a yes. huge difference. So thank you to all of the yeah. mindful technologies out there bringing That's that right. That's right. So, so <laughs> yeah. now, uh, what about this? Is kind of a different question. What about any regrets? Do you have any regrets and 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 um, that you may have learned from in life? Well, yeah. I mean, I think one of the, I guess, well, you know, I, you know, I, I guess it's a regret, but but oftentimes, you know, the regrets are like, does it is it really a regret? You know, I early on in my um, college years, uh, I created a. Um, this was back in the um, in the nineties. I created a ordering system uh, for a company I was working for called Tasty Cake in Philadelphia. And I created it as part of a, a, a class project. Uh, and this was before the internet. So it was an ordering processing system for, and I cut out all the little cakes designs and I scanned them all in and, you know, I had a little ordering form and uh, you can order the cakes as whatever quantities. And I had, you know, when, you, when the app opened up, it sang the, the, the song, nobody bakes a cake as tasty as a tasty cake. And uh, so I created this as a, as a as a as a class project, and one of my professors was you know was telling me that, that I could um, you know make it real and and sell it you know to start to start a business. But at that time, I had I wasn't thinking about a business at the time. I, I was thinking about you know here's an assignment that was given to me and through my professor, and I was going to attack it you know, with my own creativity, and that's what I did. Um, so. Um, you know, I, I guess maybe the, if, if there were a regret, it would be that I probably should have started the business, an innovation business back then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was um, a part, the part of you back then. Yeah, because I'm like, well, you know, uh, you know, I would see people coming and, you know, you have to actually drive to the locations or make a phone call to place orders at that time. And it's like, uh, why can't you do it online or, or some, some, uh, some, you know, mechanism where you can actually, you know, do it on, on some, some device or something. And of course that device turned out to be the internet. Uh, so, you know, that's the only thing is I, I could have started much, much earlier. Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I think, I think a lot of people probably have that experience though. Life nudge that they missed, you know? Um, but then, but then life keeps nudging you and eventually, hopefully you wake up. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's okay because, you know, now it's, it's more about, you know, why the why, you know, as opposed to just the what, you know, for me, it's, it's this, that's the whole purposeful thing again. Like, you know, what is the problem that you're solving uh, and then creating the product around that and being innovative around the problem. Uh, and I wasn't thinking about, you know, that necessarily back then. I was just thinking in terms of, you know, I did see a problem in that, you know, you had to place a phone call to place an order. And uh, so that didn't really make a lot of sense to me that that was why, you know, you know based on being a computer science uh, major at the time. OK, we, there has to be a better way to do this. Um, so I think it's a little bit deeper um, uh, for me today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you really got in touch with your why. And that, it sounds like that's what has kept you going. It's been a driver for your success. And, and what I think is beautiful is that you are, you're teaching others how to really deep dive into their own whys. Um, yes. Yes. And I yes. That's great. Yeah. I mean, when you look at life today, you look at our society and all the challenges that we have, and there's, there's quite a bit, you know, you, you know I mean, Someone can come up with an app or some sort of device or something for even police brutality or uh, COVID-19, <laughs> uh, better testing and screening for COVID-19, <laughs> quicker, quicker than 24 hours, you know, <laughs> can we have something like that? Can someone create that for us? I mean, we <laughs> for anyone to use, not just uh, athletes and, and uh, uh, political figures, but, uh, you know, I want to you know, I was telling my, my 15 year old son, he's like, well, I tested um, negative for COVID-19. So can I have a sleepover? No, because you can test negative today and you can leave the testing center and go get, and, and, and catch COVID. The conversation heard all around the world by another person. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I, so I, and I'm, I'm sitting here like this kid is like, I don't mean to sound like the bad, the mean mom or the bad mom, but you know, your friend could, well, they tested positive negative too. Well, yeah, but they could have on their way to our house, they could catch oh, it. Yeah. Oh, right there with you. Can't tell you. And it's, just, it's the same over and over again. Like right? this hasn't changed. We're still in the pandemic. Yeah. We're still <laughs> in the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. So someone needs to come up with an idea and I will help you <laughs> come yes. up with an idea for an app that, that can help us get our test results 
in an hour. <laughs> yes. I mean, you can sit in quarantine right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's incubate that. Yes. I'm all about it. I'm right there with you. Uh, this is great. So let, well, let me ask you this. And in, in all of the things that you've learned, okay, is there is there one change uh, listeners could make right now in their lives that, that could help them get closer to their own success? Well, you know, again, everything revolves around us. I, I, I'm really a big fan of, you know, not looking outside of yourself, like what, what this person is doing, that person is doing, and, you know, doing a lot of research online. And I mean, unless you do the research within first, I, I'm a really big component of that. You know, there's a there's a huge gold mine of ideas and and finger pointing about you know inspiration within you your life and things that are just really under your nose, and so I think if you tend to stick with that first and you know follow your own north star, I think you'll be leading yourself to um, you know the yellow brick road for sure. Well, you know, before you go, you know, is there anything because I love the projects you have coming up are fantastic. Your book, the online program, you've got some really great things coming. Is there anything else that is, is, you know, in your mind percolating for you that you feel like needs to be done? You know, um, I guess the only other thing that I'd like to do that I haven't done yet is maybe like you're doing, to do a podcast show one day. <laughs> yeah, there you That's go. pretty much it. Oh, I had to be interesting, especially with all the different, I mean, you could do a podcast with all the different companies that their their stories I'd yeah, actually just their stories about you know just the problems that they're all solving and you know how they're solving it and, and how did they come up with the idea you know how did they come up with the solution uh you know I think that would be a really powerful podcast show for yeah sure. really interesting oh I look forward to listening to it yeah, one day <laughs> one day <laughs> when I okay. catch a minute <laughs> another project to finish up with so <laughs> which I, I'm actually going to be checking that out myself I'm, I'm very very curious so we'll have all of the links and everything in the show notes is, is there anything you know is there anything I didn't ask you about that that um that you would want to bring up before before we sign off uh, no, um, just lo- would love people to stay tuned for the, um, early access, uh, of the, uh, prototype. I mean, I'm sorry, early access for the, um, purposeful collab, uh, that's coming up, which is a, which is the accelerator, uh, and also, um, um, stay tuned and, and look out on our, on our social media for the, um, the book pre-launches that are coming out. Um, yeah, so if they could connect with any of our social media outlets, um, we're at Mind Catalyst everywhere. It's Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, um, uh, Instagram, uh, and that's Catalyst with a K, not a C. Um, that'd be great. Yes, we'll put all those links too. Sure. We'll have- Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate Carnella. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time as well. And, and this is this is a great platform. I'm, I'm really glad to be a part of it. Thank you. I so enjoyed my talk with Carnella. I love that she built her business in a space that she loves and adores. Within that space, Carnella got deep in touch with her why. She wanted to intentionally create her purposeful visions by embodying and staying steadfast in her why she attracted, worked with, and helped build other companies and products that were purposeful in nature. I think it's amazing that Carnella took a passion of hers and figured out how to grow that passion in others. What a powerful and impactful process. Once she had her company established, she continued to look at other ways she could make an impact. She wrote her book to help spread that message to a much wider audience. And then she went and created a virtual accelerator to help women look at life differently and help people tackle a goal that may have previously felt insurmountable. I love this so much. We need endless more ambassadors such as Carnella asking people and especially focusing on those people who have been raised to hold themselves back such as women asking them why not why not you you don't have to have all the answers that's the secret these people 
the ones who create these amazing companies, these amazing products, they didn't have all the answers. They are just like you and just like me. And we all have the capability for greatness. Same as anyone else out there. It all begins with an idea. And the great news is there are companies such as Mind Catalyst that will help you find the answers you need and that will walk with you on the journey of making your dream a reality. If you didn't know these companies exist, now you do. Next time that idea pops in your head, I want you to hear Carnella saying, why not? Why not you? Then call her. One of Carnella's keys to success is staying true to herself. And even more importantly, knowing what that means for her and her life. She looks inward as opposed to outward. It's absolutely vital to spend that time looking inside, getting in touch with who you are outside of everyone else's influences. What are your principles? What are your values? Your passions? What makes you, you? Know what feels right inside for you and then consistently live your life that way. Embody who you are and who you want to be. When you feel right inside, you naturally attract the success. Carnella reminds us that what we need, what we're looking for, is most often right under our nose. Everything can be found within. Do your own research within. Be self-reflective. Look at your life and how you interact and engage. Bringing awareness to your experiences is enormously powerful in not only engaging your own personal involvement, but also in creating inspiration. Most people aren't even thinking about self-reflection, let alone doing it. Take the time daily to get in touch and watch how your life begins to improve. You are the keeper of a huge gold mine of ideas. I loved how Carnella put it. Follow your own North Star and it will lead to your own yellow brick road. I think my favorite part of our call was when she said, failures and challenges are the vitamins and nutrients that fuel our soul. It's the rubbish that makes us grow. This response absolutely made my soul sing. This is a fundamental truth. I know too many people who look at their mistakes as proof of failure, as proof that they don't belong, as proof that they aren't good enough. Success will never come if you let a mistake or challenge make you feel as if you are not good enough. You are good enough. Every successful person I have spoken with in all of my years answers this question in a similar way. Well, the failures may have felt like failures at the time. They were difficult. They hurt. It was hard to go through them. But what they found was that they were really learning. They were experiencing things that caused them to evolve and grow and lead them to where they needed to be today. The key is in the learning and growing from those mistakes. It's what leads to that mature, thriving, successful life. Carnella shared with us her habits that set her up for success. She felt having that that set morning routine and evening routine set her day up for easy success. Now, 
I found this interesting because many success gurus suggest starting your day with a simple task like making your bed. They say by doing a simple task you set for yourself every day, it starts your day off with that good feeling of being successful right off the bat. And it sets you off with that right mindset. The success gurus also suggest getting up an hour early and breaking your routine up is very similar to what Carnella laid out. 20 minutes of proactively feeding your mind in a positive way. 20 minutes of feeding your body through physical exercise. And then 20 minutes of feeding your soul through meditation, journaling, self-reflection. Spending a few minutes Thinking about how you want your perfect day to go can help you create that well-lived day. And after all, a successful, fulfilled life is the culmination of a series of well-lived days. My hope is that we are all living our best day every day. Until next time. Thank you for spending time with us on Fresh Blood. If you love this episode, please consider subscribing, rating, or giving us a review. I'm looking forward to connecting with you again on the next episode.